Hey, welcome back to the channel, Living in San Antonio. So today we're going to discuss the 10 things that you absolutely need to consider before moving to San Antonio. If not, you might want to avoid this place. We're going to get to those right now. Hi guys, well, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jesse Lopez. I'm the owner of Blue Utopia Realty here in San Antonio, Texas. And I just, before we get into the whole 10 things that you need to consider before moving here, or you may consider avoiding San Antonio, I just want to tell you a little bit about the channel. First and foremost, thank you. Thank you so much for those of you who have subscribed. If you're looking for information about San Antonio, things that are going to help you have a smooth move to San Antonio and be successful while living here, then this is the place for you. We're the number one relocation uh, brokerage in San Antonio that we help hundreds of people move here every single year. So if that's the kind of information that you're looking for, hit on the subscribe button and tap on that bell so you're notified every single time we put out new content. And uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing that you need to consider, and this one you may not even know, like it may not even dawn on you until you're here for a year or two or maybe three, I don't know, uh, and it's seasonal allergies. The seasonal allergies here are horrible. And there's one in particular, well, not, not one, there's one right now. And this is just the beginning of January, 2024. And this is kind of the reason I thought about this video. I said, you know what? This happens every single year. And as uh, someone who grew up in San Antonio, it wasn't always like this. So I grew up uh, and I've lived here the majority of my life with the exception of a few years that I, I was in the military. But uh, as a child, I never had allergies. Like it never occurred to me. I never, you know, got sick or anything like that. Uh, as till I grew up and I became an adult and I was married and uh, I was... I would, you know, take my son to school and walk there and and I noticed that I would get this cold every single year. It's like without a doubt I would get a cold and it was at this time of year. Like it was always runny nose, itchy watery eyes, and that's just what I dismissed it at as as a cold. So I didn't think anything more of it, but finally I was like, you know what? I got to do something about this. So I went to the doctor. They did a test to check to see if I had allergies, and lo and behold, I had aller I was allergic to over a hundred different things that are in the air here in San Antonio. Now, the main culprit is um, ce mountain cedar. So, mountain cedar is just the entire hill country in San Antonio, the surrounding area, has these cedar trees. And if you've ever seen them pollinate, it is it looks magnificent. It's like a yellow blanket just that covers everything and it just gets everywhere. And if it's to the point where you can see it, you can imagine what kind of havoc it's wreaking inside your nose. And my wife used to say, oh, I don't have allergies. I don't have allergies. And we moved away from San Antonio to, you know, to different parts of the world. And when we moved back here, bam, it hit her just like it hit me when I was a young adult. So allergies, if you're allergic to anything, and I'm going to tell you, it's from mold to mountain cedar to pecan to all kinds of things, it's going to be in the air because San Antonio doesn't get a lot of rain. So as soon as it dries up and these plants start to pollinate, that pollen gets everywhere and it might knock you over, like literally. So if you're allergic to anything, this may not be the place for you to move. However, you know, as you can tell, I'm not sick right now. I don't have a runny nose and itchy watery eyes. And it's because I take allergy medicine. I finally got the medication that I needed in order to, you know, to combat this. But it, I don't take it every day because obviously medicine is bad for your liver. Too much medicine. And so the time or the instant it starts to act up, I start to feel my nose itchy or my eyes watery. Then I start taking the Allegra, that's what I take, and uh, in about two or three days, bam, I'm covered. As long as I keep taking it every day, I can avoid this, the allergies and the effects that this mountain cedar specifically for me has on my body. So if you don't like allergies, you don't want to be sniffling, sneezing uh, with itchy, watery eyes, 
you might want to rethink moving to San Antonio. The second thing that you want to consider when moving to San Antonio is construction. It seems like San Antonio is in a perpetual state of construction. And why is it? Because people like you keep moving here. So every single year, a new project comes up and you would think that another project would close out, but it doesn't. They just continue to pile up on each other and construction here, construction there. There's just so much construction going on in San Antonio that it is, it's literally annoying because it affects everything. It affects people's moods. It affects traffic patterns. It affects time to get places like construction. Literally, there is some construction that has been going on for the majority of my adult life. And it's been 20, 30 years, and they're still working on it. And the bad thing about it is, is when they're done, it's not even a good product. Like, there's just so much traffic, so many people moving here, that the freshly paved roads are already destroyed before the project's even over. And it's no different right now. Like, right now, there's some major projects happening in the IH-35 and Loop 1604 corridor, the IH-10 and Loop 1604 corridor. Uh, there's just everywhere, IH, uh, excuse me, 410 and IH-10 uh, East going to Houston. I mean, there's just so much construction. And if that isn't enough, that just because they're having construction and it, there's lane closures and all that, something that adds fuel to the fire is the construction workers, right? So San Antonio is infamous for having people who haul loads back and forth uncovered. So what does that mean? That means nails fall out of the back of trailers. That means rocks fall out of the trailers. And guess what? They're going to end up in your tires and your windshield. So if you're moving to San Antonio, you might want to check your insurance policy because as, I, as far as I know, my insurance does not cover broken windshields. And that is just something that occurs all the single time. Like there's always trucks, cement trucks. There's always gravel trucks. There's, and they have the audacity to put a sign that says, not responsible for broken windshield. Hey buddy, why don't you just cover your load so the rocks don't come off your truck? Like it is so annoying because if you don't have a broken windshield, wait about a week. You'll have one when you get here to San Antonio. I want to thank you again for tuning into the channel and if you haven't already done so please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and tap on that bell so you're notified every single time I put out new content. Like I get phone calls from people like you moving to San Antonio every single day and I absolutely love helping them. Like. I'm from San Antonio. I lived here the majority of my life and I absolutely am in love with this place. Like even when I was in the military and I was somewhere else, I always found my way back to San Antonio because it's just such a great place to live. Now I know we're talking about the negatives and I just want you to know what the negatives are before you move here so you're prepared. But don't get me wrong, this place is a really nice place. Hit the subscribe button, send me a comment, tell me what your fears are, what is something that worries you about moving to San Antonio and I'll make sure and I'll cover it. I'll definitely respond right away because I just love promoting my city and all the good things that we have here. So now let's get back to all the bad stuff. The third thing you want to consider when moving to San Antonio is the weather. Now, I've said it in previous videos that the weather is hot and it's not a lie. Like we hit over 100 days with 100 plus degree weather here in San Antonio. So it, get, it gets extremely hot and coupled with humidity, it's oppressive. Like you don't want to go outside. Everything you wear, you just sweat through it and uh, you're just always just filthy because you're sweating and the heat and the humidity but uh that's not all like right now during the winter right now is winter and it's not that cold like compared to everybody else like in the northern states or in the new england area but it is cold for san antonio remember we were just 100 degrees a couple of weeks ago today the weather is getting down to about 34 35 degrees so we're nearing the freezing point and that has just another mixture of, you know, danger here in San Antonio, because one, I'm going to tell you, and we're going to get into, um, you know, the drivers here in a minute, but the traffic during rain 
or during ice, forget about it. Like if it, if there's ice on the road, the entire city shuts down. Like we don't go anywhere. We're not equipped to handle ice. We're not equipped to handle snow. Uh, we don't have snow truck or salt trucks or anything like that. So once that happens, the whole, the whole city shuts down. And the idiots that get on the road, they're gonna make a mess. They're gonna they're gonna crash. They're gonna crash into you because they don't know what they're doing. But still, in their mind, they're like, "Hey, I got this." Well, black ice is real. Like you can't get around that stuff. So we're actually preparing for a deep freeze in the next couple of days. And uh, man, I'm gonna have to get some footage of that because you need to see exactly how dumb things get here whenever the weather turns cold. We're not equipped for it. We're in the south. This is a hot place. When it comes to cold weather and ice and, you know, all that good stuff, we just know, don't know how to handle it. All right, and the fifth thing that you need to really, really, really think about, and this is something that I beat my drum every single time, and you might get tired of me saying it, but guess what? It is my number one thing that absolutely sucks about San Antonio, and it's the drivers. Like, okay, it's partially their fault, but it's partially the Texas Department of Transportation's fault because they're the ones that design the roads and they don't think about it. Like there's, hey, there's millions of people moving here. Let's just, you know, add one lane. No, man, like we got, we need 10 lane highways in order to accommodate everybody moving here. But the drivers, they're just so inconsiderate. Like there's, I've read, I'm reading uh, different forums and one of the people or most of the people say, you know, these people don't even know what turn signals are. And they're right. I don't even use turn signals. I'm just joking. I do use turn signals, but that's just something that people do. They just zip in and out of traffic. They can literally, if there's an exit that they're approaching that they want to get off on, they could be in the fast lane, which is four lanes to the left. And they will zip right past everybody, cut everybody off and get off their exit because God forbid they go to the next exit and back you know backtrack themselves no they're just gonna get right in front of you and the biggest offenders you guessed it texas boys with big trucks like they think just because they own this big humongous truck they can just zip right through and oh there's another offender and that's the via bus the via transit which is our public transportation system they think they own the road. They will just cut you off and uh, get in front of you. So it, it's the turn signals or lack there of turn signals. It's the competing to get on and off the highway. I've said this in many videos before. Our, syst our roads are not designed very well. So you have competing traffic because you have an on-ramp into the highway and you have an exit ramp getting off the highway at the same location. So people are jockeying for position. People are speeding up, slowing down, trying to prevent the other drivers from getting into their lane. And then the worst part is the speed. Like they're, you're either a speed demon or you're gonna sit going 50 miles an hour on the fast lane. And let me tell you, they're out there. And I always refer to them as people that wanna regulate the law on their own. Like they want to make sure that you are not going to go faster than the speeding limit on the fast lane. So they will literally park because that's what it feels like. They will park in the fast lane and just go 50 miles an hour. And people are passing them on the right, honking at them. And they're just like, whatever. It's my lane. I'm staying here. And some of them get even bold. Like if you approach a car that's going too slow on the highway, don't be surprised because they're going to slam on their brakes and hopefully, well, not hopefully, but they're going to hope that you wreck into them so they could sue you. So be careful. It is not a joke. Oh, and one more thing that you need to remember is that a lot of San Antonio drivers don't even have insurance coverage. That's true. Ask people about it. But yeah, the drivers are the worst. If there's anything that I could just double down on and super complain about San Antonio is the drivers. We absolutely do not know how to drive in San Antonio. Now, number six that you need to consider is if you like creepy crawly things, you're going to fit right in. 
especially with the roaches. There's a lot of roaches here in San Antonio, and I don't even know why because it's so... Well, I guess I do know why because it's hot and humid. So these roaches, I mean, they it attracts the moisture, attracts roaches, and we don't just have some, you know, run-of-the-mill roaches. We have roaches that fly. We have roaches that bite. Like, if you don't like roaches or creepy crawly things on you, you might not want to move here because they are horrible. There are so many roaches. And you remember back in the 70s when they had paneling on homes? Well, those things are just a, a breeding ground for roaches. So if you buy a home and it has paneling, you better be ready to fight those roaches because they're there and they're generational. They're not going anywhere. Like these things survive microwaves. They survive um, any kind of pesticide you put out. Like they, they will literally lick that pesticide and go, mmm, yummy, like it was salsa or something like that. So these roaches are no joke. They are ferocious. They fly. Uh, it seems like they even communicate with each other and make sure that they plan an attack on you during the nighttime. So as soon as those lights go off, you're going to hear them. Literally, you'll hear them walking around. So if you don't like roaches, stay away from here. But it's not just the roaches. The mosquitoes, when it does rain and when it gets humid, these mosquitoes come out of nowhere. Like it could be dry and hot for 100 days straight, as soon as it rains, the mosquitoes are out. And then, the mosquitoes aren't the only ones, flies. Like, I like barbecuing in my backyard, and there's not a fly within a mile. And as soon as those ribs or that brisket or something, you know, a meat product hits the grill, those flies come out and it's not just one or twosies they're like swarms of flies so unless you like eating flies for dinner you might want to avoid living in san antonio all right number seven that you need to consider when moving to san antonio is homelessness it is it's bad like it really is really bad uh, I know there's a lot of homelessness in the United States, and it's unfortunate that, that we're not paying more attention to that uh, and helping more of the homeless people. But, you know, there's just so many homeless people. I guess they got the word that San Antonio is a great place to live because we have, I think we have more than our share of homeless folks here. And you can see that when you're driving around, especially in the downtown area, you can see, you know, little pods of, of uh, tents and people that just, you know, congregate with each other. You know, lots of shopping carts and all their belongings. It really is a sad thing. A lot of homeless people will be asking you for money or they'll be at the inter main intersections, you know, begging for food or begging for money. And uh, un unfortunately, a lot of them, you know, are on drugs. So... It's up to you if you want to give them money. I usually give them food because, you know, you can't you can't smoke a hamburger. Uh, I mean, I guess you could, but, you know, you give them food, you know, try to help out, you know. But there's a lot of drug use within the homeless community. So if you're giving them money, just, you know, beware. You might be helping support a habit. But there, it doesn't matter where in San Antonio you live. Like I live in one of the most premier areas of San Antonio, uh, Alamo Heights. There's a video about Alamo Heights right here. And there's homeless people around there. Uh, they walk through the neighborhoods and most of them stay to themselves and they don't do anything, you know, to you overtly. But, you know, there's things like car break-ins and there's, uh, you know, they'll, they'll steal stuff from your porch. Like it is a real thing. So homelessness, if you can't stand the sight of seeing homeless people, you might not want to move to San Antonio. So number eight, the number eight thing that you need to consider while moving to San Antonio is something I just touched on a little bit, and that's crime. So we have a lot of homeless people, and we also have a lot of immigrants that are coming here. There's this one center uh, on San Pedro Road that they in-process these immigrants that are coming into the country, and uh, they're just if you drive down San Pedro, you will see them walking up and down the streets. And I'm not saying that they're criminals, but what I am saying is that an influx of immigrants, a lot of homelessness, and then just people that are bad people, it just, it's a mixture for crime. And San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the United States, or the seven most populous uh, 
city in the United States, and we have our fair share of of crime. Now, there's crime to the tune of about 280 something murders a year, and people think like I was just talking to a friend of mine yesterday. We were having brunch. And she says, really, there's a lot of murders here? And I was like, do you not watch the news? Like 280 murders is more than, you know, we should have. There's only 365 days in a year. So we're only a couple, you know, a couple of murders shy of one a day. And that's pretty sad. So, you know, the good thing is, if there is a good thing about this, is that most murders happen with people that know each other. So if you're not hanging around with the wrong crowd, you're probably going to be safe. Like, you're probably not going to die. But who knows? Like, hang out with the wrong crowd, live in the wrong area, and you might just get mixed up in one of those groups. So if you're moving to San Antonio and you need help finding the right place to live, call the experts. Call us. We'd love to help you. Our phone number's right here. Give us a call. Send us an email. Send us a text. We'd love to help you on your move to San Antonio to make sure that you get the right home and you're in the right neighborhood so you're safe but uh, other crime there's a lot of vandalism and property crime so break-ins if people are people are just walking up to cars in the driveways of their home and breaking in I had a friend who recently was living in another nice neighborhood which is Stone Oak I have a video about Stone Oak right here and uh, she just moved in her car got broken into they stole her gun, they stole her computer, they stole money, like all these valuables she had in her driveway because she thought she was in a safe area. And Stone Oak, by the way, is one of the safest areas, but she still was, you know, uh, a victim to, to theft. So people will break in your cars and depending on the make and model of your car, they'll even steal your car. So that's another thing that's really bad about San Antonio. There's a lot of car theft. So... Uh, another friend of mine, we were just talking about Hyundai Elantras are hot here. I don't know why, but they like stealing those cars. So if you own one of those, you know, just be careful where you're parking. Make sure that, you know, there's security or, uh, you know, you're not in the wrong neighborhoods, which, you know, again, if you contact me, I'll tell you where those neighborhoods are. But yeah, just be aware that there, there is crime here. We are a very nice city. However, we do have our misfits that go out there and, you know, commit crime against people, against property, and, and against society. So be, beware. We do have crime. If you want to look for, uh, for crime statistics, it's an easy Google search. You know, just Google crime statistics in San Antonio, and it'll give you an idea of what kind of crimes that we are dealing with here. But make no doubt about it, there's crime here. And then the next thing, the ninth thing that you want to consider when moving to San Antonio is whether or not you want to jump in the game of paying property taxes. That's to me, that's not a problem. Like I understand why property taxes are are high. And um, I obviously uh, I literally don't even think they're that high. However, that's one of the main complaints that people uh give me whenever they're moving here they're like hey property taxes are too high i'm going to rent instead and uh, it doesn't make any sense to me because rent is you get none of that back but uh anyway uh property taxes are a little high but the good thing is is that we do have homestead exemption so once you move here and you buy a property you can just it's a simple process you change your driver's license to match the address of your home and then you can apply for a homestead exemption. It gives you a break on property taxes, but you know, as I've mentioned in other videos before, the good thing is, is we have no state income tax. So the state's not putting their hands in your pocket unless you buy a home. And of course, that's the way that we just support schools. We support the city, the county, all that road repairs, the millions of projects we have going on in San Antonio, construction projects, that's how we fund them. So property taxes are something people complain about, but to me, it's just, you know, part of the process, part of owning a home and building that generational wealth. And then the 10th thing, I saved it for last because this was a big topic a few years ago we called it snowpocalypse <laughs> like people are still having 
uh, flashbacks and post-traumatic stress over this. Uh, it is just such, it's horrible because I think we're the only people in the entire country that are affected by this. So Texas has its own power grid and it's managed by ERCOT. It, and la not last year, during Snowpocalypse, the power grid just went out. Like there was zero power. Well, there was some power here and some power there. So it was, it just depends. Like I had two homes at the time. One of them had power and the other one didn't. So it's just, it's a shame. And I kind of get it. We're not built for cold weather, but you know, we've had a couple of years that ERCOT could have done something to improve the power grid. I don't know what that is. I'm not an engineer. Don't even pretend to be, but it seems like they have done nothing. And now tomorrow we're going to go into a deep freeze. So we're going to have two or three days of deep freeze, which is below uh, 32 degrees, which I think they're forecasting about 20 degrees, which San Antonians are not built for 20 degree weather. I just want to tell you that real quick. But the power grid is something that, you know, and it's not even a joking matter like, oh, well, we're not going to have power. But think about the elderly. Think about children. Think about not having any heat source like that is really that can affect people like we literally had hundreds of people die during the last uh, freeze that we had that we call snow apocalypse. So um, if you're moving to San Antonio, bring a generator because you might need it during the winter when it does freeze. So those are the things that San Antonio uh, might have you running for the hills. If you can't deal with those things, then do me a favor, do your family a favor. Don't move here because guess what? Those are the top 10 things that are the worst about San Antonio. Fortunately, there's workarounds to all of them and you know things like fiesta and nice weather throughout the majority of the year kind of compensate for that. But if you have any questions about San Antonio and you're looking to move here, I'd love to help. Just give me a call, send me a text, send me an email, smoke signal, I'll answer them all. Know that I have your back when moving to San Antonio. And in the meantime, first off, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And now take a look at some of these other videos that I have about San Antonio. Until the next video, we'll see you then.